Okay, at this stage it's, uh, it's going to be a little, little bit useful um, to explain uh, the, the need. Before I go into explaining the two tools and uh, how we use them, I would like to do a brief, a brief spiel on the why we use them. So I've prepared a, a very brief presentation about the, the software development lifecycle and the different models that historically have existed or all still exist and are, are not so much a matter of history um, as they are a matter of scale of industry. So we start with, this is not working, yes this has focus now, this is working, right. So we start with the craft model, so you've got um, you know, a lady um, customer and a male um, this looks like a toilet sign, but you know, uh, it's very sexist. Anyway, you've got like a customer and you've got one developer, for instance. Like the, the, the most simplest uh, feedback loop you've got and you know, the, they um, sort of send some emails to ask for, 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 for code to be written, maybe a little website, um, he gets paid in chocolate you know, and they kind of iterate, they talk to each other, they iterate, like it's all up in, you know, it's a little house, it's kind of a, a little sort of craft. And people might get paid, people may, may get not, chocolate may not be the main currency. He, sorry, my cat is distracting me. But, okay, and the next step up from that, so that that's fairly simple because, like, you can see um, th this black arrow is always going to represent the code being generated, and we're going to see as we as we grow in size, uh, that things get a little bit more complicated. Then you've got kind of the code shop model. You get a sort of a bit of a larger, bit of a larger dev team. You know, they 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 drink a lot of coffee. Um, there's a, a mix of an appropriate mix of gender here, um, and they've got different customers. You know, um, or different groups of customers that have given different needs. So like you know, some of them get those code. Uh, some of those guys need a fish. Right. Um, at this stage, there's still a bit of you know, kind of money will tend to get involved, but it's still single, single individual dollar bills. So uh, they might be split into teams, but there's still a fairly direct communication between the people who need the code, the people who write the code, and the people who use the code. Um, this is this is something you will still see in small B2B operations, um, or. I can't really think of anything else. Even small startup now, it's very difficult to get kind of direct feedback from your users. You know, like the people writing requirements are not, are not the people um, using the software. Now, you've got the actual, come on, like, you know, this is uh, Mr. Ford comes into play, separation of labor, the industry, uh, the big uh, Charlie Foxtrot uh, operation. So you're going to have some, um, for some reason on this one, the, the development team are all alien, aliens. Because they're alienated for I didn't do this on purpose, but yeah. So you get loads and loads of customers and loads and loads of customer groups that represent different interests. They will talk to a support team and complain a lot in 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 blue about the bug. It's a big it's a big industry. It's a big factory. You've got you've got support department. You've got architects that issue 200 page specs. There's loads of money being you know being raised. The customer talk to effectively the business. The business owners, you know, that are worried about worried about their little profit, you, you might have like, you know, kind of more complex arrangements, you know, on that side of things and so on and so forth. The the business owners have got a vision, you know, they send ideas to the dev team. Um the, the support people will try to kind of feedback some of the bugs to the dev team. This is the error here, the dev at deving, uh, and they ship more and more and more code ultimately to the customers um, and this is where it gets complicated effectively this is this is something that started to happen probably maybe you know as as it became a, a as software became a, a bigger and bigger business then people realized that traditional method of scaling uh, in terms of industry um, that applied to brick and mortar uh, as it were industries didn't work that separation of labor didn't seem to work quite as well as it did in construction or as it did in making, you know, making Ford cars, typically, as uh, it was Ford who um, invented, well, was credited certainly for that. So, the solution is the feedback or backlog model. Uh, I've not come up with this. Uh, I wish I had. I'm, I'm not nearly as smart. I, for a long time, I didn't buy into it. 
Uh, one thing to bear in mind is that the software industry moves very, very fast. Uh, technologies are subject to fashion. Uh, we hear a lot about Docker, programming languages change. What? No, what? What? Just ignore this. One course. What's happened? Where's my... Why am I not... Sorry about that. Um, yeah, the, the software industry changes a lot and the methodology changes a lot are also subject to, um, to, to, to fashion. So we've moved to things from like what, what you'd call like V-cycle or waterfall model to extreme programming from, WIMF, from which as they've derived agile um, programming or methodology, one of which is Scrum. Um, but ultimately, what of the, those most recent sort of paradigms have in, in common is that if you really go back, you know, so far, this is kind of like making the same thing on a bigger scale. This is scaling. But there's a point at which you can't scale in complexity uh, without becoming completely un unmanageable. Uh, because you can't move fast enough to respond to the needs of the market. Um, hence the, this, this kind of focus on agility and agile being a big buzzword in, um, in, in, so the cat, stop it. Hubert! Sorry. Um, so this, th this model, the feedback model, um, the idea is to have a feedback loop, but to, you've noticed that like in our previous, all devs are alienated from the customers. Ultimately, they get like, you know, like big business ideas from, the business owners who, you know, are shareholders and what they get the sense of the market and kind of, you know, financial pressure sort of gives them feature dev and feature roadmap and they still have to fix some bugs, but they're not really directly in contact with the customers. This is not something you can regain um, unless you're really talking and you're doing B2B on a small scale or, or you're doing B2C, you know, like you're a small, you're, you're you know, the, the, the craft model if you're like a small website developer and you're charging people like a grand for a simple a simple website then you still get that model but like you know it, it doesn't scale so the idea is to um, to reorganize the communication to shift I hate myself for saying this but to shift the paradigm so instead of like doing doing the same thing but bigger you do it differently so you still get your customers right and you've got all of the parts of the business you've got the business the business the QA people, the ops people, the dev, uh, support sales and marketing. Um, support still listen to the customer, sales will talk to the customer, support will get bugs, marketing will send messages to the customer. But ultimately, all of those people have got ideas and bugs, you know, for new feature. The idea is that, like, the, the dev team here is kind of ring-fenced in that, like, rather than being bombarded with, you know, uh, oh, you know, sales absolutely need this new feature and marketing wants this and support wants this bug fix and so on. Dev are deliberately fenced off. But this I the idea here is that everyone talks to a common backlog. And then this backlog is, you know, everyone looks at it, including the dev team. And then this is the arrow that's missing, effectively. The backlog is what of, of tasks and, and bugs, and, and the rule is that we fix bugs before we start writing new features, um, drives what become uh, or build, which in terms are shipped to the customers. So the number of arrows hasn't significantly been reduced, but this idea is to have a, a feedback loop that it's that is much clearer in that um, you ship a build, some bugs come out of it, some marketing tries to gauge, tries to see what you know the competition is doing, tries to gauge what the needs are. Everyone's got a voice, you know, um, everyone, everyone get their say, everyone can log their ideas, and those ideas are put onto the backlog, they're prioritized, they're used to build the next build, and we iterate, and we loop, and we loop, and we loop. And like this is what we're going to try to do here at Elastic Host, and um, the way we are going to try to do this is by using Fabricator. But like the fact we're using Fabricator is completely anecdotal. The fact is that we're going to be using um, 
three different layers of backlogs and a system of prioritization and a system of nomination of tasks, uh, of features, of bugs, so that everyone in the company has got an equal say into what goes into build, that everyone in the company has got an equal visibility over what goes into a particular build, um, and that we try to get a sense that, you know, that that we, we communicate through standard channels, not just in terms of Fabricator, but in terms of, in particular, the way, um, you know, we listen from our customers, and impl implementing a ticketing system is part of that, um, because it means that we've got a much shorter, you know, uh, um, numbers of, you know, we've got a much shorter chain of um, of communication between the end user and a much clearer and a much more standardized chain of communication between the customer um, and the support department via bugs. Oops, I messed this up. Via that raise bugs and so that, you know, anything that gets spotted doesn't get lost in the queue. It can be, you know, it, it's part of, it becomes a bug that support raise puts on the backlog and, you know, everyone talks about it and we, we prioritize together. Um, I'm sorry if I've rented out a little bit. Um, I spent quite a little bit of time on that presentation. It will, uh, will s the URL will be available if you want to go through it at your own pace, but ultimately I do think that, you know, um, presentation had not so much about kind of like having bullet points. So if you were to just look at this slide, then it's a little bit difficult to see what's happening. You have to listen to the audio. Um, but yeah, the, I like the fish. The fish was a good. Uh, the fish was a nice touch. Okay, so that was it. That was it for um, the the software development lifecycle, and ultimately trying to contextualize what we're trying to do. But don't sweat this too much. This is kind of in very general abstract term. I could bore you with with Scrum and Agile and so on, but I want. I wanted to make this presentation in the middle of the Fabricator tutorials, so that there was a little bit of context as to why we're going from we're going towards this because the point is that we're we're basically around here like we were here and that was fine we're basically around here and if we keep doing the same thing we're going to get there and we to a degree we're already there and that is problematic so before we 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 find ourselves unable to scale we need to 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 kind of just rejiggle the process a little bit to try and do something that's more in line with this um and hopefully it will make everyone happier and we'll all sing kumbaya and uh, you know run naked in the forest or, or something something like that but well that's the plan anyway okay uh, move on to the next video, which should be about those backlogs, how do they manifest in fabricators. I hope you're as excited as I am. Uh, exit full screen. Stop recording.